serious redditors who grew up with shady criminal parents. What did your mum or dad teach you was okay to do that you later learned was illegal or seriously frowned upon? Story 1. My parents would often get me to answer the phone as a young kid, like four to five and older. Anyways, the people on the phone always asked if Jones Mollusk was there. My parents would coach me, no Jones Mollusk lives here, you don't know who that is. Well, as a kid, I really didn't have a clue who Jones Mollusk was because dad was always just dad or went by his nickname. Didn't find out for years what my dad's real name was. I guess I helped my parents evade a few debt collectors and God knows what else. Also, me and my sister used to go play Barbies in Daddy's clubhouse. It was our favourite place. Dad built it himself in our backyard, and they even had a big bar and a pool table, and they brought a velvet couch for me and my sister to play on, while Dad played pool and visited with all my uncles. Dad always called it his clubhouse too, so when people asked where my dad was, I'd say Dad was probably in his clubhouse. To which my mum would always get so mad at me, and I'd be so confused because that's what Dad and everyone else called it. But I wasn't supposed to talk about it, apparently. Haha. <laughs> yeah, my dad was in a biker gang. My dad, when he took us places like the aquarium or amusement parks, used to always try and get us in cheaper. Well, one thing about me was that I was always a really oblivious child. This both helped and hurt him, such as the phone calls. I mean, I legitimately didn't know who Jones Mollusks was for years, guys. But in this case, it backfired. So once my dad was trying to get us into a park or something, and he lied about my age to get me in cheaper, insulted immediately puffed up and said, Dad, I am not six, I am seven. Cue the brow raise of the attendant and my dad puffing back, You're freaking six. Good times. I can't remember if we got in cheaper or not. Probably not. He was so mad after he told me, If I say you're six, you're freaking six. I roll, dads are weird, I thought. My dad hated cops growing up. He used to call them freaking pigs. He'd always made snide remarks about cops just eating donuts and being generally useless. He'd get stopped a lot by them. Just general harassment. I guess everyone knew him and his general associates. Anyways, one day we stop at a Wendy's slash Tim Horton's split restaurant. Now if you don't know, sometimes restaurants share a building together and in this case, we were only separated by a short wall to the other side of Tim's. Well, we're waiting for our burger and me being like four to five, whatever, I'm up on my knees looking over the partition. Well, there on the other side is a table full of cops. I remember feeling shocked and suddenly exclaiming very loudly, Dad, you're right, all them pigs do is eat donuts. My mother was mortified and she pulled me down to sit. The cops all looked over, I guess, and started laughing luckily. My dad thought it was hilarious. Story two, heroin use and other shady dealings with dealers and the like. My mother and her husband were long-term heroin users. They knew each other since they were teenagers and got married young. My mother met my father while her husband was incarcerated for related offences. They remained friends and only got back together when I was maybe 15 or so. My mother was always ill, like, it felt like she was going to die any minute. She was in agony most of the time she was conscious, and a heroin fix seemed to be the only thing to chase the pain away. We later found out that she was riddled with cancer. Her cervix, uterus, and a large portion of her bowel from long ignored problems that developed from my birth. She was incredibly afraid of hospitals, so just never got checked out. From as early as I could remember, I was my mother's primary carer. I would often go to the local payphones on the estate to contact her dealer for a fix for her and even transported her across town on my bike. I was a preteen. It didn't feel wrong. I wasn't even aware it was illegal. All I knew is what I was doing would ultimately give my crying, screaming mother a little bit of a break from the pain and agony she was always in. Ironically, she eventually kicked her habit after being forced into hospital for her cancer treatment. Around the early 2000s, she was better and healthier than I'd ever seen her. We would do gardening together, walk in the woods, and so on. Unfortunately, her cancer treatment, radiotherapy, destroyed large portions of her bowel that were unaffected by cancer, and she ended up using a colostomy bag. This, coupled with a lifelong reading disorder, left her dangerously underweight, and she was hospitalized in 2005. A doctor administered a Hickman line feeding tube, now ironic as Hickman was her married name, but he incorrectly inserted it and punctured her lunts. She drowned in her sleep on the 6th of September, 2005. And today, the 12th of September, is her birthday. I freaking hate this time of year. Hey, guess what? Our team just introduced Rufus Rugs. Premium, custom, hand-tufted rugs. Imagine having your own unique rug that perfectly reflects your style. Whether you're a dedicated Notre Dame fan or simply adore Pokemon and can't resist displaying bus toys, you can turn your dreams into reality. 
We can create almost anything you want. Don't wait. Dive deeper into the world of Rufus Rugs by clicking the first link in the description. Story 3. Somehow, I always knew it was wrong. Despite knowing it was wrong, sometimes I still went along with it. I mean, getting paid $50 to act as a lookout while mom, along with other relatives, would break into and steal hundreds of dollars in quarters from various washing dryer machines was pretty damn awesome to a 10-year-old. And by $50, I mean $50 in quarters may as well have been a billion dollars because I always felt like Scrooge McDuck diving into his vault when I got paid. I hated helping to count and package up her portion into those bank rolls, though. In case anyone was curious, she had keys for each machine. I won't go into details as to how she obtained copies of the keys, but let's just say it was part genius and part social engineering, or cojones. The method still works to this day, but it's much easier to get caught thanks to technology and really good quality cameras. Her related crimes, I also knew it was wrong and I stayed completely away from them. I was, and still am, terrified when it comes to harsh major I've seen too much to know that it's not for me and hopefully never will be. Then there was my stepdad. He ran his own con, completely separate from my mum. But again I knew it was wrong, but still sort of went along with it. He would steal various items from his jobs, plural because the dude worked one full-time job at a major retailer, then had his own janitorial business with a good amount of accounts, probably sleeping no more than five hours a day, at least five days a week, then sell them at the flea market. Going with him to the flea market and helping set up and sell his items was fun. The flea market vendors had their own community of sorts, so we knew all the other vendors in our area, and they all treated my brother and me like family. During Christmas, he'd steal tons of toys from his job, and my brother and I would get to choose our own presents for Xmas before he sold the rest at the flea market. My brother was a few years younger, so I don't think he was aware of how we got all those toys. I guess you can say they taught us to be okay with doing crimes as long as we never got caught. Neither of them ever got caught, but they did divorce, and he did better with his life, while she spiraled deeper into a bad path, until ultimately dying of related complications. Story 4. I'm so scared to say this because I've literally never told anyone, but screw it. Here it goes. My stepmom worked in the treatment field. How it works is if clients stayed in rehab for a certain amount of time, the person who got them in there would get paid. My stepmom had a good heart at first, she really did. However, 80% of her clients were back on the H before the week was over, so my stepmom would take her throwaway clients, them drugs while they were in rehab for however long. So by the time my stepmom got paid, they would be back on the streets doing the same stuff as usual. She was paying them in to stay in rehab. The only reason I know this is because I got Snoopy and looked through my stepmom's phone when she let me use it when I needed to call somebody while my phone was broken. I eventually built up the courage to confront her about it as she said, she didn't do this with all of her clients. Some really wanted to get help and she did help them. And that is true. However, there was no justification for it. It escalated into a heated argument that led to me storming out of the house. She would say things such as, this is how the electricity stays on. However, after a very meaningful talk, she doesn't work in the field anymore. I truly do believe she feels bad, as she should. We decided to not tell anyone else in the family, mainly because my family is full of ex My stepmom has been clean of H and for 12 years, and it would literally tear our family apart. It feels nice to finally get this off my chest. It has stayed in secrecy since 2015, after reading a lot of these stories. I find comfort in knowing that I'm not the only one who comes from a messed up family. Story 5. Quite a few things. Backstory. My bio dad was convicted of murder, got away with another murder by claiming self-defense, no clue if it was truly self-defense, and apparently had a third murder that he never got caught for. He would steal constantly from people to things inside stores. One of my earliest memories is of wanting this super cute pink hat. I believe I was around eight. He put it on my head and told me to walk to the car. I remember asking about paying and he said, don't worry, just walk. So little me walks to the outside doors with her heart pounding and then the alarm goes off. I froze and ran back to my dad who was still shopping. The first lesson I can remember I learned, you just need to keep walking when those alarms go off. He died a few years back. My brothers and I are decent people. My brother is a great dad despite who he had as a dad. None of us five kids have murdered anyone as far as I know. He was an extremely ab father and husband. I was the only daughter and he physically and emotionally abused me from 7 to 14 years of age. I ended up in foster care at 14, have two great parents who were my first foster family, a loving bio mom who does her best, and even more siblings from my former foster parents. I have my own struggles, but you'd never know the trauma we went through if you met any of us.
Anyways, before we continue, thank you for watching our content. And if you enjoy our content and want to see more, click on that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Thanks. Now back to the video. Story 6. My dad stole a few things in a sneaky way so my brother and I would have one each. In one instance, for example, he bought a Game Boy game. He brought it back to the car, removed the cartridge, and took it back into the store saying the case was empty. He did the same thing with those Pikachu Tamagotchi things. I think his biggest steal was a PlayStation 2. He actually did purchase one. My mum went in and picked it up. But when leaving the store, the door person didn't tear the receipt. So, my dad took the receipt back in, picked up another PS2, stuck the receipt on it, and walked out. The door person tore the receipt this time, but obviously didn't pay attention to the time of sale. Dad also ran a huge business of installing chips in PlayStations so they could play copied games. He would rent games, burn a copy, then sell copies to other people. We had a whole library and catalogue of copied games, and Dad had quite a few customers. Looking back, I see how dodgy it was and why he told me not to tell too many people about it. Story 7 So this question brings up a very specific memory. My dad never said explicitly that what he was doing was acceptable, but he certainly didn't tell me that this was wrong. I'm between the ages of five to seven, unsure about a specific timeline on this, and my mum is often working in the evenings while my dad is sporadically around. One night while my mum is gone, dad gathers me to go for an adventure. Usually this means driving around the city and looking at stuff. Well, dad pulls up to a hospital and parks. He sits with me in the car and gives me a script saying that we recently moved here, a lie, and that he had hurt his back while moving boxes, mega lie. I play along because, hey, it's my dad, and sure, whatever he says goes. Any other specifics from that night are hazy. I think he managed to talk his way into some sort of painkiller prescription. This was in the early 2000s, so opioids weren't as visible as now. My dad has been in successful treatment since then, but man, that's a big memory that stands out for how screwed up my younger life was. Story 8. My dad was a mechanic. The ones that stuck out were when he would charge for a new replacement part and then go to the local junkyard and get the part from there. If the customer asked up front, he would be honest and offer the two options. Junkyard part will sign cheap, but likely reliable or will sign expensive and only parts warranty. If they didn't ask most of the time, it was a junkyard part. Rarely got in trouble or called out since his prices were a fraction of regular shops. Oh, I guess the other main shady part was that he wasn't a legit certified mechanic, and most businesses were cash slash under the table. His apprentice is now my mechanic, and he learned from my dad's mistakes. He provides receipts and boxes, and shows me where he installed the new part, and it's always shiny and new, minus obvious grease handling installation marks. Story 9. My mum was a drug dealer. There are so many things I could list, but I'm on my phone. So just a few things off the top of my head. Smoking When I was about four... I chased my mum through the Woolworths drugstore screaming, Mommy, mommy, you dropped your joint. Don't you want your joint? She hurried faster, shushing me, and I got a big talking to that afternoon. Snorting. I was in the second grade when I got sent to the principal's office for teaching my friends how to make lines with salt and use part of a milk straw to snort it. My mum was really pissed. Don't talk to cops or any straight people. I didn't know why at first, but I lived in terror of straight people. I got congratulations for making it through FBI questioning when I was probably six years old when they raided our land. SWAT teams are scary. Boobs are good for smuggling. Cleaning out stems and seeds is a fun summer job. Don't say anyone's name on the phone. Those are just a few things I immediately recall. Ooh, I forgot to add how every now and then people in our circle of friends would move far away for a while and change names, and we weren't ever allowed to call them by their old names. My mum also made us believe that m***ing was an excellent pain reliever for all ages. Story 10. My dad was investigated by the FBI for racketeering, but they were unable to press charges on him. He was also sued by a major financial entity for racketeering as well. Anyways, when I was a teenager, my dad had a lawsuit brought against him by multiple employees for unpaid overtime, and he ordered me to go through the boxes upstairs in a warehouse where we had to find all of their time cards. The storage area was a disaster, papers everywhere, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find them, so I told my dad that it was no use. The time cards weren't there. My dad then yelled at me, telling me that he needed those time cards and said that all of these people were trying to rip him off. So, if I had to, just make up time cards for them so that they were working 40 hours a week with no overtime but don't bother telling him about what I did to get the time cards when I had them. I just had to have them for him one way or the other. 
I didn't think much about the last bit until much later, but long story short, I ended up making time cards that he used for the case. He won, realized several years later that my dad had used me for forgery, and when I confronted him about it, he just laughed and said that I was a minor at the time and nobody puts a minor in jail for a white-collar crime. I've run into some of those employees since then, and when they accosted me for being his daughter and how they would want to punch my dad, or worse, if it was him they ran into, I've always confessed this to them. Ironically enough, they have all said that they would punch him on my behalf too, because the fact that he used his own daughter pissed them off even more. And about the racketeering thing, he loved laughing about that and calling himself a Don. When I was going to take over the business several years later after the forgery bit, his oldest employees gave me loyalty oaths. I ran like hell. My dad absolutely was a racketeer. Story 11. My blood father was a dealer and he often came home with some really nifty stuff. I later found out it was stuff he got from people who didn't have cash on them but still wanted to buy. I think the thing I feel most guilty about was a Game Boy Advance I was given that we'd either only have for a little while or have forever. When he said that, it was usually forever. It had a heap of games with it and I went through and started new games on all of them, erasing the existing save files. Well, he took it back after about a month, so I guess whoever it was paid up and I feel really sorry for their kid. Mummy or Daddy was an a** and used their Game Boy Advance as collateral and when they got it back, all their saves were gone. I was only a kid at the time and didn't really know the context in which I was handed the thing, but I know it belonged to a kid, since there were quite a few young child learning game cartridges alongside Mario and Pokemon. Story 12. When my relative was m me at seven years old, I walked out of my room into the living room, where my mother and her friends were h off their a I said, Mummy is making me... My mother told me to go back to bed and sent me back to the room with him. I was punished for being up after bedtime. I thought everyone had an uncountable amount of aunts and uncles who only ever showed up once in a while for five minutes or less, many of whom I never saw again. When I was somewhere under five, I found my babysitter's boyfriend strung out on the couch with a tourniquet and needle still in place. I was told he was checking his diabetes. My mother taught me how important it was to lie to the police and CPS because they were monsters and just wanted to take us away from her for no reason. I learned how to lie without hesitation. My mother always had me wear long sleeves to cover the bruises growing up from the physical abuse of certain relatives and family friends. I remember the moment my innocence was shattered. My mother and I were driving in the middle of the night, blasting Aframan because I got h I asked my mother if she did dr not expecting her to say yes. She said, I can't lie to you. Do you know what the word discreet means? I was eight years old. Friends were never allowed inside the house, and eventually their parents, for no reason, Stop letting them over. I thought all of these things, and many more, were normal. Quite a shock in middle school when I made friends and saw what their home lives were like. Story 13. My parents were almost involved in a cult at one point in time, and my then-girlfriend's parents were very involved. I learned from her parents that stealing and scanning people was okay as long as they clearly had enough, and some of it was donated to the cult. My parents never actively discouraged me, but they never said it was okay either and I honestly never did steal anything. Her parents also tried to convince me that it was God's will for my ex to have a child at 17 and that she would get one from one of the cult members if I wasn't up for the task. Really creepy stuff, and I'm glad I moved countries and got away from it all. Story 14. I remember when I was around six or seven years old, my mother, father, one-year-old brother and myself were riding in a brown car that my mother was driving. As she turned a corner in a residential neighborhood, the power steering went out and we ran into a parked car in front of a home. A man and woman ran out screaming that they were calling the police. All of a sudden, my dad grabs me and starts running full speed down the street, throws me over a fence in someone's yard, jumps over himself and we both lay down. A few minutes later, police cars with their searchlights start circling the neighborhood. The officer gets on the bullhorn calling his name and saying he is trash for dragging his six-year-old daughter with him while he ran. Apparently he had serious warrants, for which I have no clue. I just remember being so happy and proud of myself for keeping up. I kept asking, did I do good, daddy? He disappeared when I was eight years old, never to be seen again. I heard he died a couple of years back in my early thirties. Story 15. I watched Scooby-Doo and the gang before committing theft. My dad's second job was throwing papers, and I would help on weekends to earn some allowance. We would go to the warehouse at 3am with all the other paper boys. Paper people, 
to pick up papers fresh off the press and I would sit in the back seat of the truck and roll them up to help him throw them. Dailies are easy because they just take a rubber band. If it was dewy out or raining, you had to put them in a plastic bag and the Sundays almost always took a bag just in case. The thing about Sundays is the newspaper giveth on Sunday and none of my dad's customers ever received it. We had freezer bags full of shampoo and conditioner samples, but the grand prize was when McDonald's was having the Monopoly game. Sunday was when they'd give out the board with a couple of stickers, but again, none of our customers ever got them. We had a Yahtzee cup full of free small fries and burgers for several years. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this next video. The YouTube algorithm really thinks you like it.